The Commonwealth has accused Karen Reed of striking her boyfriend, Boston police officer, John O'Keefe, with her car after a night of drinking and leaving him in the snow to die. The defense is saying, as they said in their opening statement, that Karen Reed was framed and this is all a cover-up. So after maybe 30 minutes, time is a construct, of testimony, Brian Higgins was done on the stand. Yanetti really followed up with him about throwing away his phone, taking out his SIM card and breaking it, if he did that. He said, if I was going to do that, that's what I would have done. It's not even really an answer to anything. And throwing it away on a military base. My speculation is military base trash isn't going to get searched outside your home by law enforcement or members of the public. He said the phone was old and he said that he wanted to change his number because a target of an investigation had called his personal phone and he found that his number had essentially gotten out onto the web, his personal cell phone number. He also said he didn't really have memories and pictures. It was actually some of the sadder testimony from this witness. He's like, I, I'm connected to my work phone, but I don't have like pictures and memories on my personal phone. I'm divorced. I don't have kids. He's like, so it's a lot of pictures of a glass at a bar. And I'm like, that's just sad. And so that was really the rest of his testimony. Did redirect do much to clear this up? Not really. The prosecutor asked if he ever had pieces of taillight on his snowplow or anything like that. He said that he didn't. He said that if he had seen John O'Keefe, he would have done something. And that's really the end. Nothing tremendously new or groundbreaking from that testimony other than he did, in fact, throw away his phone on a military base. Look, I don't understand the amount of butt dials, uh, phones that are gotten rid of, though it's clear that this phone was gotten rid of after the order to turn over the phone had been denied. It doesn't make it look much better. Getting the new number the day before the preservation order goes into place doesn't look good. It's not a coincidence to me because both Brian Albert and Brian Higgins got rid of their phones the day before they were ordered to preserve them or Higgins rid of the phone number but kept the phone for a while. It's just such odd behavior. He didn't back up anything. He's like, the phone is gone, the backup's gone. Brian Albert's like, I traded it in, got a new phone. I don't know what you're talking about. Day before the preservation order, bye. The butt dials, the we didn't do this, we didn't do that, just wild stuff. And then at the end of Brian Higgins' testimony, the prosecution is going to be calling John O'Keefe's niece and nephew and or both. There is a media order that the testimony of both juveniles cannot be streamed. No audio will be streamed. It will not be live transmitted, tweeted, texted. There is pen and paper only. And that is what will be allowed to later be reported from in the courtroom. For deep dives into the stories that I covered here, you can find them on my YouTube channel at The Emily D. Baker and The Emily Show Podcast. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. The podcast goes live on Wednesdays. And if you want to stay in the loop with everything I'm doing, receive the fastest notifications out there and get more Law Nerd community, join me at lawnerdapp.com, our free app for iOS and Android. 